Turn to one person and say, God is here. Come on, turn to another person and say, God is here. And say, this white garment looks good on you. Say, this white cloth looks good on you. This cloth looks good on you. And I wish you come to church every Sunday in white. Hallelujah. Amazing. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we be upstanding? Let's just begin to worship the Holy Spirit. Let's just rise up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise. We lift up, Jesus. We lift your name up. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Can somebody begin to exalt the name of the Lord God? Exalt him, exalt him, exalt him. Call him names. Call him in your language. Call him in your dialect. Call him names. What do you call him in Mexico? What do you call him in Spanish? What do you call him in Africa? What do you call him in Africa? What do you call him in America? Just call him names. Call him those names that makes him happy. Let heaven feel your presence right here. Wave your hand to Holy Spirit. Just thank him. Say, Father, we give you all the praise. We thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. And we give you Glory, we worship you, as
praise your name, Heavenly Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. How many of you know that Jesus had the final say? Woo! Hallelujah. No 
life. The Lord is my life. The Lord is my life. Working, you never stop, you never stop working. 
to be if your story was just like a story maybe it might that when I look back when I think about the goodness of God and the life of the living my heart melts and the tears roll to appreciate God 
that what the enemy meant for evil, God, turn them around for good. One more time, I want you to join me and say, Father, we thank you. On behalf of Covenant family, we say thank you. On behalf of these nations, we say thank you. On behalf of every member, we didn't lose anyone. Father, we say thank you. You are with us and you did not withdraw your confidence in us. We bless your name this morning. Here we are again. A destiny discovery. The third day of this program. And I know greater works, miracles you will perform today in the life of your people in the name of Jesus. Brethren, I want you to ask God for one thing today, for you being here rejoicing with us, celebrating with us, your lives will never, must never remain the same. I want you to ask God for one thing. That God meet me at the point of my needs. I want to arise and I want to shine. In every areas of my life, I want to arise and I want to shine. In every of my undertaking in the name of Jesus Christ. So open your mouth and turn into a prayer. That God Almighty will help you. We hold on to you. That you will arise and you will shine. You will arise and you will shine. At work you will arise and you will shine. At home you will arise and you will shine. Everywhere you show up to, mercy will show up for you. Favor will show up for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and turn it to prayer. La bro sandali gagabosha te leken dere bos moli brazin dali kaya bosha il don dali keken dere bosha mahori la granda bosha de bobo il la granda bosha dali keken de bosha mahori brazin dali kata yaba Father in the name of Jesus Christ, we will arise, we will shine. We will arise and we will shine. We will arise and we will shine. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Something about our destiny. Yesterday, our mother-in-law said some of people, some of their destiny has been caged. It was caged because of something you said to yourself unknowingly or you think you pronounce into the life of your children unknowingly. You wake up in the morning, you look at your child, oh, she's just crazy. And the enemy tap into that craziness and attach it to the destiny of that child. And you begin to see craziness happening in the life of that child. You say, no, she's just stupid. No, she's stupid. He's stupid. You didn't know, you are not cursing that child knowingly, but you are making the pronouncements unknowing and cursing the life of that child. And by the time you turn around, you see the stupidity in his life. Can't get nothing straight. You tell him to do this, he does not listen to you. He becomes so obnoxious that you cannot even stand that child yourself. You'll be like, oh, oh, then the, and the enemy will not bring another idea. Oh, he has uh, ADA, she has this. Those are the plans of the enemy concerning people's life. And most of us, we are suffering for those things. And your children, now he's suffering from the same thing because your parents made those pronunciations into, uh, uh, in, in, into your life. This morning, like our mother in the Lord prayed yesterday, we need to reverse those pronouncements. And reverse it, the Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever my destiny has been caged, by whatever my parent has called me, but whoever that has called me being stupid, being nonsense, the Father, because I am here at the Destiny Discovery Conference, Father, change my story. In the name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and begin to talk to God. Clap your hands and call God and say, Father, change my life. Change every evil pronouncement concerning me, concerning my children, concerning my family. Father, I present your children 
said to you this morning, every negative pronouncement, every negative pronouncement, be here from their parents, be here from their loved ones, free from anybody under the sound of my voice, Father. We reverse them tonight this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of us, we are suffering from things that we know nothing about. Some things that your parents did on your behalf. And here you are. Some of you don't even, you don't even know your children. You don't even know your parents. Some of you didn't even grow up knowing both of your parents together. And those things is affecting your destiny fulfillment. Some of us are wondering outside, can even pinpoint where is the root cause of my problem? Because the Bible said, I mean, my mom said, the problem known is problem solved. This money, we all have to go to that deep root of those problems. Things that you knew nothing about that is affecting your fulfillment. Things that you knew know nothing about. Some of us were just born. There's some somebody said, I was raised in a group home. I was never in a life. My parents were never in my life. And you are looking yourself, pouring the same thing, and you see yourself not making any progress in life. Those are the root cause, and you see some people suffering from family, the generations, addiction, drugs. Most of the men are in the prison. Why? Because of the root cause. That is affecting us. The Bible says, if my people that call by my name come together, pray together. And guess what he said? He said he will heal the land. And I know because you are here this morning, ever we heal your homes, we heal the life of your children in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that has lost their bad right to enemy. Everyone that has lost one or two things, their destiny fulfillment. Because you are here this morning, God will turn those things around even for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Perhaps you did not grow up with your family. Perhaps you did not grow up with your mother. Perhaps you did not grow up with your father. Perhaps you have no problem Nobody, nobody that you can relate to that you can call parents. I've got a good news for you. All you have to do is to give your life to Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith. The blood of Jesus Christ will wipe away every curses, every generational curses, every evil affliction that is affecting you, that is affecting your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ will wipe away things that's not of God in your life in the name of Jesus Christ for one minute I want to raise your hands up your right hand and ask God present your home your family into the hands of God this morning one minute you have come to a Mount Zion the Bible says upon this mountain there shall be holiness there shall be deliverance And it tells me you will begin to possess your possession. Ask God for one thing this morning. That's DDC 2023. By the time you come back next year to rejoice with us, you will come here with a basket full with testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because I see God giving you a new job. I see God giving you a new home. I see God giving you a own husband. I see God giving you a own wife. I see God touching your lives. I see God giving you babies. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see God turning your lives around. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see God turning your situation. Every negativity that was in your life following you. I see God turning those around it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you. This one has presented their case to you. The Bible says, open your mouth wide and I will fill it up. And the same Bible tells me, it said, ask and it shall be given unto you. 
knock the door shall be open he said have not a man that should lie on the son of man that should repent of my word he has called you the head not the tail every plans every covenant of blessings that God gave to our father Abraham I hereby release them unto you this day in the name of Jesus Christ father we give you glory because you are good God in Jesus mighty name we pray amen put your hands together put those beautiful hands together and celebrate God I want you to walk around give two or three people high five and tell them they are welcome to church in the name of Jesus Christ if you know don't know if you don't know their names ask them what is your name where were you yesterday talk to your neighbor get to know them tell them they are welcome to church tell them they are looking up beautiful Tell them the glory of God is upon their lives. Tell them that God Almighty will keep them and will sustain them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I just want to welcome everyone to church this morning. It has been a wonderful three days, three powerful days program. And we just want to give glory to God. For those of you that was here on Friday, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was explosive. And we thank God for the move of God. Saturday morning, we had such a great time in his presence. And yesterday was not just, it was just awesome. I don't even know how to describe it. And this morning, I know that God, that everything that he has said to do in your life will become, will be manifested today in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will not go home empty handed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I welcome my families, my sisters, brethren that have been here. And I thank God for your lives, the team that put this together. And I celebrate you. Thank you so much. I love you. And I really, 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 mucho, 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 mucho gracias. Thank you so much. I celebrate you guys. Thank you. I thank you. Thank the pastorates. Thanks to all our friends that came from Astas Cadero. Thank you so much for those prayers. And I know God will continue to be with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our sister from Santa Clara, God bless you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. God will continue to keep you in perfect peace in Jesus' mighty name. So this morning, I don't want to take too much of your time. We're going to um, do some little small, our team, our covenant dancer, they always open the floor for us. So they, will, they have a presentation. So after that, we do um, the choir ministrations. Then we do our Titan offering. Then we'll now call on the senior pastor for today's message. Then after that, we do our sacrifice, Thanksgiving um, 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 sacrif the sacrifice, thanksgiving sacrifice offering. Hallelujah. And as you do that, God Almighty, we meet each and every one of you at the point of your needs in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we meet here on Mondays, actually on, on Zoom for Bible study every, six, every Monday at 6 p.m. If you need the link, Please don't hesitate to see me and to or text me, and I will send you the link. You don't have to be a member of this church to join. We'll be dealing with some deep root of marriages, or family problems, things that's affecting most of us, things that we deal with on a daily basis. You see, people don't want to get married no more. They don't want to be responsible. They don't want to take that responsibility. Some of we won't tell you. It's just a paperwork stuff. How can I be living with you for 10 years? And you are telling me you don't want to pull, you don't want to, you don't want to get married to me. But now I already gave you four kids. What do I do? So those are the things we deal with. Hallelujah. And that is the things that mostly people are suffering from these days. And before you get married, what do I need to do? What do I look for in a man? What do I look for in a woman? How do I get about this? When God is showing you the red light, the yellow light, the green light, there's a three lights that he will show you before you say yes to that man 
before you say no to that woman. Hallelujah. So don't do it by yourself. We are the village that's going to, that we are all putting things together. Our theme here is raising, restoring healthy and godly families. And that's who we are. So let's do this together. Let's join and connect to that Zoom Bible study every Monday evening, 6 p.m. Very, very powerful section. And there's always too many questions. If you have questions, you, have, you don't have to tell us your name. Just text that question to 559-355-5650. It's a dedicated phone number for that. So you can text all your questions. Again, 559-355-5650. When you do that, we read, we talk, we talked about the questions, we digest it. You're going to hear different people's different opinion, and we pray along with it. And we let you know what the Bible is saying concerning that issue. Hallelujah. And I pray every family that is going through troubles, God will settle every home in the name of Jesus Christ. So on Wednesday, we come here again, meeting for evening service at 6 p.m. It's our disciple. Like yesterday, Pastor said, it's not going to be called Bible study anymore. It's going to be, I mean, it's going to be called... Um, Digging deep. Hallelujah. And on Sunday morning, it's going to be called discipleship um, um, class. Hallelujah. So let's all do all this together at 6 p.m. on Wednesday for digging deep into the word of God. Let's dig deep into the Bible and see what God wants to do in our lives. And Friday, we meet our senior pastor on Facebook Live. How many people have Facebook? I don't, don't, I know you, you're my friends on Facebook. So don't, don't, don't put, <laughs> hallelujah. So if you, all you need to do, connect, you can connect with my Facebook, with my friend. If you're not, oh, please find your way, connect with our senior pastor. It's a prophetic hours of prayer. So we, he prays, he um, released the word of God, prophetic word of God to all of us. Very interesting and powerful session with him every Friday at 6 p.m. And on Saturday, the choir meets for choir rehearsals. If you want to join, God has given you voice and talent that you think you can, you know, be a blessing to God's people. Please don't hesitate. See me or see Brother at the end of the service. Hallelujah. God bless you. And right now, I'm going to take one or two testimony. Okay. So no testimonies. I will tell what's her name for next week. Hallelujah. So please, um, after this, I'll call on Sister Ruth for the covenant dancer for the administration. Then after that, I'll call on the choir for the administration. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Wow, put your hands together and celebrate the covenant dancers. Woo -woo! Thank you so much. God bless you. More grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I will call on the choir for their administration. Hallelujah. of my melody you are all that matters you are all that matters I'll make room for two you and I Jesus you are all that matters you are all that matters always
Can we stand? Hallelujah. 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 Give God all the glory. Give God all the praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. call on Sister Vicky for Titan offering. Here our Titan offering is very solemn. Whatever God has placed in your heart to bless God with, you bring it to the front, you use it as a connection between you and your breakthrough. So you come to the front, when you get to the altar, just don't drop it. Take a minute or so and pray. Take a minute or so and pray. So that way you can collect your blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm sure we are all blessed already. I'm blessed already. Amen. Amen. We are in the presence of the Lord. The Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Amen. It's time for offering. Let's bring our offering, every one of us. Uh, whatever you have, you have packaged for the Lord today. Uh, we need to sow a seed in the house of the Lord. The Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together. Shall men give unto your bosom? Let's bring our tithes and offerings. Shall we raise up? Shall we raise our offerings and tithes unto the Lord? We need to sow a seed because we want the Lord to bless our seed. Shall we pray? Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you have given unto us, O Lord. We appreciate you, O Lord, for your mercy that we are here today in your presence, O Lord, even to receive the abundance of joy, of peace. And all what you have packaged for us, O oh Lord, today. And out of what you have given unto us, O oh Lord, we give this token unto you, Father. We pray, Lord, that we bless it in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you shall be, O oh Lord, for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray that for those that did not have, Lord, we pray that, Lord, you will bless them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.
Everlasting Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for this time in your presence. Thank you for the grace and the ability you've given unto us to be able to sow and to give in your house. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you will breathe on these offerings and it will come unto you as a sweet smelling salve. Turn around the situations and the finances of your people. Give them breakthroughs, bounty harvests in the name of Jesus. Bible says the young lion do lack and suffer hunger. But they that trust in the Lord would not lack any good thing. Lord, none of this one will lack anything they desire in righteousness in the name of Jesus. Thank you King, King of Glory. In Jesus mighty name we are worship. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. We thank God for this time in God's presence. You are God from, from beginning, beginning to the end. end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Yes, Father Lord, you are God. You call this meeting this conference by yourself to restore the dignity of your people to reveal and to, for them to recover their destiny you said before you formed them you knew them before they came forth from the womb you already have an ordination upon their life and faithful is it that has called us who will also do it Lord we thank you Lord for you have brought us to bless us you have brought us to restore us and you've called us into your abundance of your grace and blessings Lord we commit our hearts and we open our hearts unto you this morning to receive from you. Bless us by your word. Amen. Let your word find entrance Amen. into our hearts and bring increased faith and abundance of joy Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Receive all the praise. Amen. Receive all the glory. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have 
prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, I'd like to welcome us great people of God to the day three of our Destiny Discovery Conference 2023 with the team Arise. Arise. Somebody say Arise. Somebody say Arise. You know, we are, we've been considering a very sensitive subject. Very sensitive because of the seasons and the times that we are in. We are in the times that it is said to be the dispensation called the last days. And because we are in the last days, our understanding of the things of the spirit must be accurate, must be, must be on point for us to be able to overcome the devices of the enemy. The enemy knows that he has but a short time and is doing everything to ensure that he cripples the life of God's people. And that is why this conference is very crucial. Because the enemy uses the instrument of pleasure to, to cause men that should be doing valiantly to cause them to go to sleep. Many people are sleeping because of pleasure. Or is using the instrument of fear to paralyze the life and the destinies of God's people. They are not able to take steps because of fear of the unknown. When you turn on the TV, turn on the radio, you hear tales of woes, terrors, wars, and that is part of the enemy's agenda to stop a people from becoming who God has called them to be. And that's why this conference is very pertinent at this time, at this season. And I believe as many will connect to it, will live here with their destiny fully recovered in the name of Jesus. Arise means awake from slumber. Awake from the dead. Many are dead according to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14. Many are dead but they appear to be alive. You know, it's not just living without Alive without living. Their life is so miserable. He said, wherefore, he said, I wake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you the light. And I pray that everyone that the enemy has caused to go into the, a sleep, that, I, that is the, the enemy has succeeded in deadening their faculties. That they are not able to pick the signals from heaven. They are not able to pick what God is saying. That as you arise from this conference, God is going to restore you and you begin to hear what God is saying concerning your life, concerning your destiny in the name of Jesus. And as you begin to arise... As you awaken, you begin to take responsibilities. Responsibility is taking the right step according to what God is speaking to you. Responsibility is knowing that your destiny is dependent on your ability to take steps towards what God has spoken concerning you, what he has whispered into your ears, the dreams that you've had, the, 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 the still small voice that has spoken some things that you are even unable to share with anybody because it, they are just too huge. 
You are, you are so bewildered by them that you can't even share with somebody. But one thing is God will not show you these things if he does not want you to become them. God will not give you that dream if he doesn't know that you can attain to them. But when the enemy uses the instrument of fear, unbelief, and you begin to doubt yourself. And that is why this conference is crucial. And that is why it is pertinent. And as you begin to take responsibilities, then you get ready to shine. Somebody say, I'm ready to shine. He said, arise and shine, for thy light has come. And what does the light bring to your space? What does that light, when you say, my light has come, what does it bring to your space? How does it equip you for what is coming? Like we said yesterday, the lie, my light has come, is telling you that eternal life has come. The nature of God has come. Because that was his plan for you from the beginning. He said, let us make man in our own image. In our own likeness. So that they may have dominion over everything. In the here in the heart and beneath the heart. Praise the Lord. And a breath, a breath unto them, unto him. And that was the breath of life. So as you arise, you are rising to the life of God, to the reality of the nature of God, that God has breath into you. As you arise, you see, the light is coming with his, his grace and his anointing, his power to equip you to do what God would do. The nature of God allows you to represent God. And the anointing of God enables you to act like God. And that is why when you see somebody laying hands on the sick and they get well, it's because of that anointing that has been released as it has arisen from the dead. Many destinies, many great people are here that are supposed to be movers of industries, businesses, to be, to be causing waves. Why? Because that is who we are. He said, Gentiles shall come to the light. And kings that come to the brightness of the light. That is what will happen when we begin to arise. But all this cannot happen if we don't have one thing. And that is the faith of the son of God. We cannot do this without faith. It is impossible to please God. For he that must come to him must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. It is very crucial for us to step into the realm of the faith of the Son of God. And that is what arise. When we arise this morning, that's what we are rising to. The light of God is coming with the faith of the Son of God. Let's talk a little bit about faith. There are two dispensations of faith. We have the Abrahamic dimension of faith. And the Abrahamic dimension of faith, according to Romans chapter 4, verse 1 downwards, talks about Abraham has a problem here. Yeah. He leaves the problem and he goes over there to God and speaks to God. And when he connects with heaven, he is not bothered about that problem. He just goes to God. And God, he connects with heaven and God comes and takes care of the problem. 
He said, were he against hope, he hoped that despite the deadness of Sarah's womb, despite the deadness of his own body, that he, 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 he continued to believe God that he will have a child. Romans chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. So, instead, other people will say, oh, let's take her to the hospital. He is not perturbed by the problem. He is not concerned about the problem. He knows that faithful is he that has called him. That he will also do it. So, he goes to God and say, God, take care of the problem. And that is great. And that was the kind of faith men of old manipulated manifested. If we look at Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 32 downwards to 34, it talks about how they stopped the mouth of lions, how women brought their dead back to life. Is that subdue kingdom, wrought righteousness? Wow! That was amazing. Great faith being manifested. But when Jesus came on the scene, somebody say, when Jesus came on the scene. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, that was good, but that was kindergarten level of faith. That was good, but that was what kindergarten level of faith. And in book of uh, Matthew, the disciples came to him and asked him a question. Let's read that. In Mark 11, 22 to 23, the disciple came to him and um, he began to teach them about faith. And in verse 22, he said, And Jesus answered them, said unto them, have faith in God. But actually, if you really look at the what was really written in Hebrews, in the scripts, it was have God's kind of faith. God's kind of faith. And said, if you say Whatsoever you say to this mountain, be removed, be cast away, and you will not doubt in your heart, and you will believe everything you say, you begin to have whatever you say. So, Abraham will leave the problem and will go talk to God. But Jesus is saying, you don't need God now. You are the God in itself. You just talk to the problem and the problem will begin to disappear. Whatever mountain that is standing before you, you see it begin to melt. You see it begin to crumble. Is that who are thou mountain against Jerusalem? So that is the dispensation of faith that when you arise in this times, God is saying you have the ability to speak to that issue yourself. If you speak to it, if it does not move, you can still go back to God and say, God, because the more we, go, we trust in God, the more we continue to grow in him. 
the more we continue to grow in God. But he said, I have given you a mouth and a wisdom that the enemy cannot resist nor gainsay. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that is what arise. My li your light has come. Is dropping into your space. That this is who you are. No, God is not waiting for you to cry unto him weeping. He said, whosoever believes, whatever you say, nothing is impossible unto him that believe it. And at another point in Mark, Mark chapter 9, verse 23, he said, with God it is impossible. And then, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. So, that there's a level of faith that brings you to the realm of being a representative of God truly on earth. And that was the essence of our creation. God said, okay, we are in heaven. Let's create man to come and dominate here on our behalf. To come and represent us here on earth. To come and take charge of this. So whatever he decrees here on earth will be sealed in heaven. Whatever, he, 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 when he closes heaven, heaven is closed here. Somebody shout hallelujah. And I see God taking you to that realm as you leave this conference in the name of Jesus. You know, when you want to see God, you just need to see men with faith in action. Men with faith in action. You begin to see God in the lives of men. In you know, one level of faith, like I said, is to look on God and he will respond. And another one is to carry God to the problem. You carry God there. You say, I am the, the, the personification of God. You know, there was a point they saw Paul in the book of Acts, and they said, wow, the gods has come unto us in the likeness of men. The gods have come unto us in the likeness of men. And I see gods being raised in you, in me, and we are making waves in this city, in this Fresno, in this California, in the name of Jesus. When you talk, it is God that is talking. You are standing in the place of God. That is what, this is not a religious conference. It's an arise conference. Revelation into deep mysteries of what God really wants when he was creating us in human as humans we lost it we lost it with abraham uh, with adam but jesus came to restore everything that we lost hallelujah and part of what he came to restore back to us is god's the faith of the the faith of the son of god Hallelujah. You know, even demons are aware of this. When they see it, when they see somebody that has it, they recognize it. They say, Jesus, we knew. Paul, we know. Who are you? You must carry it before they recognize you. And when you speak with that faith, with that conviction, with that authority, it be, every situation begins to bow. 
mountains begin to melt. Doors begins to open. And lives begins to be transformed. And I see life transformers being imagined from this conference in the name of Jesus. I see pay setters imagine from this conference in the name of Jesus. I see trailblazers even imagine from this conference in the name of Jesus. So when we say arise and shine, that your light has come, the glory of the Lord has come upon you. This is what we are talking about. Arise and shine. Your light begins to shine. Men and women begins to recognize there's somebody here. When it moves, things happen. Wherever you are at, at work, things work differently. When you are not there, it may not work. But when you are there, they know things work. They cannot do without you. You are a problem solver. You are a solution provider. Why? Because you carry something on your inside. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 10, verse 16. It says, if they hear you, they hear me. Meaning when you go out for, on my behalf, when people hear you speak, they are hearing Jesus speak. Whatever you do, you are doing it as a representative of God. When they see you move, they are seeing God move. No wonder when they saw them, he said, wow, these are Christians. Why? Because there's something different in their life. They carry something. You will carry something from here in the name of Jesus. I say you will live here with something in the name of Jesus. Awake. Thou that sleepest. And he said Christ will give you light. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14. Awake. 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 There's more to life than this. Your life is, is, is meant to touch destiny. He said the honest expectation of the creatures are waiting for your manifestation. You are not just called to live life by and by. You are called to leave your footprint on the sand tone of time. You are called to leave a legacy for children and your children's children to follow. You are meant to, 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 to be a force that they cannot discount with. Hallelujah. One thing I want to also sound is this. We will never outgrow depending on God. We will never outgrow it. Make no mistake about that. Because until we live here, we still continue to learn this mystery. It's a day and a step at a time. Hallelujah. We will still continue to learn this mystery. If you try it, it did not work. What do you do? Then you go back to the Abrahamic order of faith. And you go speak for Father. God, go take care of it for me. And God will still respond. Hallelujah. Because God still wants us to continue to trust him. To depend on him. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we will never outgrow trust in God calling on God, and that's why till tomorrow the church of God is still calling on him. Hallelujah. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But for us to be able to enter into this realm, there are certain things that must be in place. Six protocols that I will run through quickly for you to be able to, and these are some of the things that the enemy is putting in place that is not really allowing us to fully manifest what God has called us to be, who God created us to be, and to function in the dimensions that God has for us in life and in destiny. But I know that after this meeting, something is going to happen in the name of Jesus. You know, for a generation to rise, to manifest the faith of the Son of God, there must be six consecrations that must be kept. And Jesus, again, was teaching the disciples in Matthew chapter 24. In verse 3 to 5. And as he sat upon the Mount Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? All this manifestation, this, we see you doing it, but we, can, we have not been able to do it. When shall all these things be that will be laying hands and they will be recovering their health? That people will be raising the dead? He said, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the hand of the world? And Jesus answered him, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. The enemy is using the instrument of deception in these end times. And that is what is using to cripple the children of God. Deception. So you must be weary of deception. If you, are, if you want to be able to walk in the faith of the Son of God. Don't allow yourself to be easily deceived by men who claim to be who they are not. And we have a lot of fake prophets, a lot of fake apostles, a lot of, you know, just overnight apostles, overnight prophets. And you following them blindsidedly is not the way to go. You need to, you know, allow the Spirit of God to guide you. Don't be deceived by men. And if we look down, again, looking at verse 7 to 8, there is another thing we need to, to look into. Said, for nations shall rise against nations, verse 7 to 8, and kingdoms against kingdoms, and there be famines and pestilence. Is that not what is happening now? Is that not what is happening now? Pestilence and earthquake, is that not what is happening now? In diverse places. And all these are the beginning of sorrow. All these are all meant by the enemy to create fear. Like we said, the enemy will want you to be in fear. And when you open the news, this is all what you are hearing. This is all what you are seeing. You begin to even fear, is there going to be a tomorrow? Is there even a need to be, am I going to even be alive to make any good, to be able to fulfill anything in life and destiny? Let me just live my life anyhow. The world is coming to an end already anyway. There is war, there is battles. I don't know if it's going to happen in my doorstep next minute. You see, 
the number of news of gunshots, deaths all over town. And that is part of what the enemy is using to create fear. And there is no place of faith in fear. There's no way you can exercise faith in the presence of fear. So you have to tune out from all these things. Hallelujah. You have to expose yourself as much as possible to the good news. A avoid all this news that is trying to create fear and paralyze your life, your destiny. Incidentally, that is what our, our new media, that's what they want. That's what gives them more sales. Incidentally, that is what you pick up on Facebook, on when you, social media. These are all the things, all the plan of the enemy in this end time. Like I said on Friday, many people, they are not buried six feet down, but they are buried in their phones, day in, day night, on, night after night, day after day, buried in their, in their phone. Not because they are doing something that is useful, but just, you know, uh, imbibing in pleasures that is having, that is causing them to be to, to go to sleep. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, negative news. They trend and they go viral more than anything. Hallelujah. Because demons are trying to create fear in the heart of men. When you adopt fear, you paralyze your faith. Expose yourself only to the good things. A testimony is come listen to testimonies of God's faithfulness, the healing, restorations. That is what will ginger your faith for accomplishment. If you allow fear, you will immobilize the forces of faith. Hallelujah. Then in verse 9, he said, Then shall they deliver you to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Affliction. There will be affliction. Sons of God, believers, Christians will be afflicted. That is what is happening now. There are nations in which people have to hide in caves, in, in uh, bunkers, just to be able to read the Bible. But the, one thing is, don't allow that affliction to dampen your resolve to serve God. Don't allow that affliction to stop you from from proclaiming who you stand for. The book of James chapter 1 verse 2 says, count it all joy when you are afflicted, when you are tempted. Count it all joy. It is all part of the process. Count it all joy. Hallelujah. You can't endure affliction. If you can't endure affliction, then you cannot manifest God. If you give up so easily, then you are not ready to manifest God. You are not ready to arise. You are not ready to become all that God has called you to do. If you want to go in the easy route, just look for the easy way out, then you will never amount to all that God has called you. Look at Joseph, what he endured before he became who God called him to be. So we have to endure. Hardness. Somebody say endure hardness. He said, what shall separate you from the love of God? In Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 37. What shall separate you? Persecutions? Challenges? You having challenges in your health? Challenges in uh, 
at work and because of that you turn your back on God you get discouraged he said it is written for thy sake we are killed all day long we are counted as a sleep sheep for the slaughter but he said nay in all these things verse 37 in all these things we are what we are more than a conqueror somebody say i am more than a conqueror i am more than a conqueror no matter what the enemy throws at me no matter the challenge they throw at me i'm not giving up because i know i am more than a conqueror somebody shout hallelujah refuse to give up don't give up your faith don't give up your convictions many have given up their convictions and before you know it they don't even know am i really what do i really believe in do i really believe am i really a christian who am i no don't allow anything to cause you to lose your convictions praise the lord and in verse 10 so those are the three the first three we're going and then shall, shall many be offended we, we're back in matthew chapter 24 verse 10 he said and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another people of god offense is the bane of the church. Many people take offense. When you are quick to take offense, things happen. Many discouraged Christians, they've turned their back, not just on their back on, on church, on the pastor, they've turned their back on God. Why? Because of offense. If you really want to manifest God, if you really want to, to, to arise to who God has called you to be, you need to be careful about taking offense. Offense will lead to bitterness. Bitterness will lead to what? Hatred. Hatred is described as worse than murder. Offense is lying there. Why do you need to take it? Why do you need to take it? People of God, who else would they talk about if they don't talk about you? They only talk about somebody that is going somewhere. They only bite the back of somebody that is ahead of them. So why don't you allow that to keep you running forward rather than you turning back and looking at who is offending you? Offense could be orchestrated by the enemies to distract you, to stop you, because they know you are heading somewhere. There's something great ahead of you, and I know you will get there in the name of Jesus. No amount of offense would discourage me from doing what God has committed into my hand to do. Amen. The truth is, people that talk about you on the side, ignore them. Because if they truly mean well, they will call you and come and give you that advice. Instead of talking about it be your, behind your back. If they really mean well for you, they will call brother, sister, we think this and this. Why don't we do it this way? But if they are not man enough, woman enough to do that, ignore them. It does not, they, it, they are not consequent to your life. Hallelujah. So when offense is about to come, what do you do? Go to God in prayers. Lord, I bring this to your throne. I want to let it go. I won't keep this in my heart. I won't allow this thing to stop me. Go to God in prayer. Because we are human. He said, be angry and sin not. 
Don't allow the sun to set on your anger. So what do you do? Go to God and give it to God. Give it to him. Hallelujah. And in the place of prayer, God will come and heal your heart. He will give you peace that passes all understanding. Joy that you cannot phantom. You just have it. And people will say, ah, they said all these things about him. They did all these things and he's still laughing. He's happy. Why? You've already took it to God in prayers. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. You know, messages today are without power, effect. Things are not happening. Why? Because most message, even on the pulpit, is because of what he has heard somebody said. Now he's now using the pulpit to reply. That is not what God says. He's trying to, 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 to bring about what he's heard about people and he's using it to, in an offensive way. So we have to be careful if we want power to continue to emanate from our pulpit, from our altar. Hallelujah. You know, when somebody offends you, if you can, make the person iron it out. And once you are done iron it out, let it go. If you cannot meet the person, take it to God, iron it out with God, let it go. Either which way, let it go. It is not worth it occupying a space in your heart. There are too many precious things God wants to give to you. You don't want offense. Hatred to be occupying that space. Hallelujah. Come to the altar of God with a pure heart and preach what the Holy Ghost has put in your spirit. I'm telling you why a generation is asleep. They are asleep because of offense. They are asleep because they've been deceived. They are asleep because they've been afflicted and they don't know how to deal with it. So, If you want to arise, we must leave offense. We must leave offense behind. If we cannot leave offense, unforgiveness behind, then we are not ready to arise. There's, and once we cannot arise, there's no shining and there's no glory. No matter how much we pray, oh, Lord, I need your glory. Until you arise before that glory can come. Hallelujah. Number five. He said, because iniquity shall abound. He said, the love of many shall wax cold. The reason many cannot manifest God is because iniquity has entered into the heart of men. Many raise holy hands on Sunday, but every other thing in the course of the week is all shrouded in darkness. Darkness has overtaken the people. Iniquity. There's no way we can manifest God if we continue to live in iniquity, in iniquity, he said, can we continue in sin and we expect grace to abound? He said, if you regard iniquity in your heart, there's no way God will be able to hear you. There's no way you'll be able to speak out from authority. You must be willing and ready to purge out every, everything that is that is trying to stop you from, from unmessing what God has for your life. The scripture says that we should 
all the mystery of faith in a good conscience. Is your, is your conscience accusing you or absolving you? When you look at that situation, is your conscience accusing you? Because your conscience is the candle of the spirit. Is the, is the candle of the spirit. Is your conscience accusing you or is it excusing you? We need to check that. First Peter, I'll be first Timothy chapter 1, verse 19. Holding the mystery of faith in a good conscience. So if you want to carry God, if you want to manifest the, the faith of the Son of God, he said, holding faith and a good conscience. Which some, having put away, they've made concerning faith, has made a shipwreck of their life, of their destiny. May you not make a shipwreck of your life and destiny in the name of Jesus. You know, brothers and sisters, just coming to this conference will not make you arise. We need to tell ourselves the truth. Just attending will not, and you've attended many of such conferences. It's the decisions you take following this that will make the difference. Make a choice, a decision to, be, to live only, to live right, to do good, not allow your conscience to accuse you of anything. That is what will cause you to arise and begin to shine. But I know you're going to take that decision. If you are taking that, can you wave your hands to me? Making the right decision. See what the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 to 21. It said, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. For in a great house, he said, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And he went on to say, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and of earth. So in God's house, it's a house of mixed multitudes. So look at your neighbor. Are you vessel of gold or you are vessel of earth? Which one be you belong to? Because God says everyone there in this place now, we have people like that. Vessels that carries the honor of God and vessels that brings dishonor to God. Say, so if a man therefore will purge himself from this, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and prepared for every good work. Prepared to fulfill destiny. Prepared to become who God has called them to be. Prepared to arise. Prepared to shine. Prepared for the light of God. So if you want to represent God in this generation, you cannot have iniquities of this generation. You cannot have the iniquity of this generation. If you want to represent God in this generation. Say with me, Lord help me. Lord help me. Help me Lord. Who, whosoever you yield yourself servant, you obey. 
Are you yielded as a servant to the powers of iniquity? Or you are yielded as a servant to the son of the living God? Whomever you yielded yourself a servant, you will be. Let's go on quickly. You know, you can't call yourself a choir member. Lifting up holy hands. But when you leave here, you are fornicating all over town. And you are saying you want to uh, represent God. A man of God called as an apostle to his generation, wasting time in, in, in Brothers and Allot's house. Feeding the pleasure of self at the expense of destiny. God will help us. God will help us. And number six, the last protocol is the protocol of action. Somebody say action. You know, you cannot see this faith work without action. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, the Bible says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the nations of the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. You cannot sit in the four corners of your, of your church and say you are fulfilling the great commission. It says, and this gospel shall be preached in all the world. Where convenient, where it's inconvenient, where it's easy, where it's not easy. God did not make a distinction. All nations in, pa in Pakistan and in India. In Palestine and in Israel, in, Tok in Tokyo and in Morocco, everyone needs to hear the preaching of this. And you have a part to play in it. In James chapter 2, verse 19 to 20. Bible says, thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? So you need to put what you believe into action. If you really believe you are a Christian, called of God to to make disciples of all nations, then you need to begin to take step in line with it. Don't keep yourself choked within these walls. When the Bible says, let your light so shine among men, that men will see your light and give glory to God. You know, there are too much light inside here that we cannot see your light. You need to go to where the darkness is so that your light can be seen. But we get so comfortable in the four walls of the church, lifting up holy hands and dancing, but not actually going out to do that which we've been called to do. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet and begin to ask God for grace. Ask God to equip you. Ask God to enable you. That you will no longer be deceived by the deception of men. That the affliction that you are going through will not cause you to be discouraged. Will not cause you to turn your back. The persecutions you are going through will not cause you to turn your back on God in the name of Jesus. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 20 says, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Go and preach the gospel. And these signs are follow them that believe. 
And they believed, they went forth and preached everywhere. And the Lord was with them and confirming the word with signs and following. I say, God is raising people that will be commanding signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. When you lay hands on the de on this dead, they will rise up in the name of Jesus. When you pray for the sick, they will be made whole in the name of Jesus. That is the caliber of men and women arising from this conference in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, use me, Lord, for your glory. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord, use me, Lord as an angel agent of change. Use me Lord to errad your plan and your plan for this generation. In the name of Jesus Christ use me Father. Use me Jesus. Mason to robo zunara mama. When you start taking action then God will confirm the action with signs and with wonders. So my first desire is for God to baptize someone with hunger. Hunger for something divine. Man. Something supernatural. Man. You have been living ordinary for a long time. Man. But God says you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Man. A holy nation. Man. Called out of darkness. Man. Into his marvelous light. Man. Lord, Lord, I desire, I desire an, encounter an encounter with the supernatural. With the supernatural. Open your mouth and speak to the Jesus Lord. Christ, Open your mouth and just speak to your Father. I Lord, I don't want to remain ordinary. I don't want to remain ordinary because I know you created me to be supernatural. Lord, I want an encounter with divinity. With divinity. With divinity. With divinity. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. An encounter with divinity. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have lived like an ordinary person all your life. This is the day. This is the hour. When you say enough is enough, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Oh, Enough is enough. Oh, Jesus. I will open up my heart, ready for the holy fire. I will let you into my heart and into my soul. Pledging my life, serving you is my desire. I will be holding back at all, responding to your call. I will open up, I will open up my heart, ready for your holy fire. I will let you into my heart and into my soul. Pledging my life, serving you is my desire. I won't be holding back at all, responding to your call. Oh, open up, I will open up. Cry out desperate right now. Speak to your father. Cry out to your father, Lord. Desperate. Let go see your desperation. Let go seize your desire. Let go seize that you want your life to change. You want situation to change. You don't want to remain ordinary. Cry out to your father. Cry out to your father. Cry out to your father. Father, put something in my life. Put your spirit in my life. Put your anointing in my life. Lord, except something comes into me, this conference cannot be over. Open your mind and cry to the Lord. Just cry to the Lord right now. 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 I don't want to. In the name of Jesus 
Jesus Christ. Activate something in my spirit. Father, touch me this morning with hunger. Touch me this morning with hunger for you. I might I want to be I, I don't want to remain. Respond to your call. In the name of Jesus Christ. Passion, 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 passion to serve you, Father. Passion to preach the gospel. He brought Zandali Kabosha. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up those hands to the heaven. Refuse to be ordinary. You know, life can be very frustrating yes. for an ordinary man. This day is your day of activation. Amen. Lord, awaken me from my slumber. Awaken me from my slumber. Awaken something in my spirit. Awaken something. Let my dimensions, dimensions wake up to today. Something must break out of me this day. Something must break out of me. Something must break out of me. Jesus Christ. The Bible says, as many that hunger. Let them come and drink. Because I am the rivers of life. And when you drink, out of your belly shall begin to flow rivers of living water. People, you are, you are living here a change. A changed person to change your family for the better. You are changing your generation for good. That after this meeting, because of where you are, bars will be shutting down because you carry something Amen. which is the glory of God. Amen. Things will be happening Amen. like ever before, Amen. even in your life, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. When men see you, Amen. they see the power of God Amen. in evidential demonstration. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, passion for the things of God, passion for the things of God to go to the nations to be an agent of change and receive it afresh in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Touch me one more time. If you desire a touch from the Lord, why don't you come forward? I'll just put a hand quickly on you and agree with you. Oh, touch me. Touch me one more time. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. I need your touch, oh Lord. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Receive that touch from God. Receive that touch. Receive that touch. Receive that touch. Receive that touch. Receive that touch afresh. And a new him feeling. Receive it right now. Touch me one more time. Oh Lord. Touch me one more time. Touch me one Touch me one more time. Touch me Touch me one more time. Everlasting Father, we thank you. Thank you for revealing the mysteries of your kingdom. Thank you for revealing the devices of the enemy in this dispensation and time. Thank you, Lord. For giving us an awakening in our spirit. Thank you, Lord, for we are rising up from our slumbers 
and we are stepping into the light of God and we begin to carry the glory that men will see us and they will see God in us in the name of Jesus Lord sickness cannot be inside glory so everyone that is here that has one ailment or the other because of the glory of God it will dry out every Amen. negative cells Amen. in your body in Amen. the name of Jesus Amen. the Bible says that the son of righteousness will rise up with healing in his wings Lord that son of righteousness is walking upon this place right now touching hearts of men touching burdens of men Amen. lifting up burdens Amen restoring the son the heart of sons to the fathers Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. thank you everlasting father thank you, jesus. because i know rising from here are giants rising from here are men that are ready to take over nations rising from here are men that are ready to preach the gospel to the hands of the heart thank you king of glory lord receive all the praise receive all the honor for in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen praise the lord hallelujah before we finish this morning or this afternoon we have our thanksgiving and ddc sacrifice you know in psalm 50 verse 5 the bible says gather unto me the people that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice some of the things we desire we have to be willing to make a sacrifice for it. Sacrifice is something that must leave you so that it will allow what you want from the hand of God to, to come into you. If you have not given your offering, you can also come and do that. If you want to do this sacrifice, you can bring it forward and God will honor it and receive it. So please come forward quickly so that we one thing we ask of you one thing that we desire as we worship you your command change my life alright 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 Arise, arise, take, take your place, place. be enthroned, all I pray, Mara, King of kings, Holy One, as we sing, arise, arise. We worship you. Just come, just come and take our life. One thing, one thing we ask of you. One thing, one thing that we desire. That as we worship you, Lord come, Lord come and change our life. Place, oh, all our praise, 
Jaira. King of kings, holy God, as we sing, Jaira. Lord, we'll lift up this sacrifice before you. You said, He that went forth, bring him precious seed with him, who doubtless return with joy and rejoice in bringing the evidence of their desire with them. Lord will decree and declare that by the turn of 2024 DDC, the evidence of this sacrifice will be real in the life of everyone that keeps into it in the name of Jesus. Everything you desire, everything you look into God for, by the reason of this sacrifice, by reason of this seed, I see God opening the heavens unto you in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, the Bible says Abraham was blessed. And every seed that came out of Abraham, the Bible tells us they were exceedingly great. Isaac was exceedingly great. Father, I present this once unto your holy hand, Father, that they shall be great in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said they shall be great in the name of Jesus. Amen. For the thought and they shall be great in the name. Amen. Because they have done this, Father. I said, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you are the one that make it rich and had no sorrow. From this talking they have presented to you, Father. Father, you will multiply it in the name. Amen. Them, oh Lord, Amen. and enlarge their post in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Amen. Again, as we about rounding up the service, let me most graciously appreciate all that has come to celebrate this time with us, and I have to specifically mention my own people here the yoruba society of central california ably represented by our leaders mr laju butu our vice president mrs laju butu is here too our uh alaji onibanjo thank you our president our secretary uh professor uh Shegun is in the house our ex-president uh, brother to 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 ye Olagoju and Mrs. Thank you all. And for those that I cannot really, my glass is not really working well, <laughs> I cannot really see that far. But I like to appreciate everyone my sister and uh, brother George and the wife, thank you, and the children. And uh, my able covenant family, hallelujah! You you've been awesome, the covenant dancers. You've been great, and our mother all the way from San Jose. Thank you, Doctor uh, Pastor Amas. Amen. God bless you, mommy. We appreciate you. Amen. And uh, our brother from another mother in Philippines. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor Eric, the Vision School Initiator. 
Hallelujah. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Our family from Atatadero, Sister Iyabo, Mommy Iyabo, God bless you. <laughs> and Brother Shegu and the family all the way from Atascadero. God bless you. We honor you. We appreciate your participation. And I know that every spirit that God has reserved for this conference, you are going home with it in the name of Jesus. But in time we gather again, next year ddc you are coming with a load full of testimony in the name of jesus god bless you elder louis for all you are doing in the kitchen god bless you brother mark sister lily lily lena you have all made this weekend awesome and great Mommy and Grace, God choirs. bless you. The choir too, awesome. Thank the media, awesome. Thank the you. ushers, thank, mm. thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's rise up. Just lift those hands to the heavens and say, Father Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for these great three days in your presence. Thank you. Thank you for the outpouring of your grace and might. Amen. Thank you for your presence that was felt, your manifest presence. Amen. Lord, as we live here, we are rising to a new dispensation. Amen. We're becoming a generational checker, Amen. a generational mover. We, things are turning around Amen. even by our declaration Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, King of Amen. Glory. Receive all the praise. Amen. Receive all the honor. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's hold our hands and make sure you are connected with somebody. That's a power in connection connect so you can collect your blessings hallelujah as we sing our song and we're ready to go home amen we are ah, of the father we are joint we are joint we the son we are children we are children of the kingdom of the kingdom we are covenant we have covenant family we have one say surely 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 goodness and mercy goodness and mercy shall follow us shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever and ever and ever thank you so much god bless you we have refreshment for you it's an awful lunch or you can eat table please make yourself away to the fellowship hall god bless you we love you and see you again next year. Amen. Shalom. Oh, Alex.